Imagine a life where severe pain, blurred vision and sensory overload are a recurring reality. For millions, there is everyday struggle of living with migraine. Migraine affects an estimated more than 10% of people worldwide, occurs most often among people aged 20 to 50 years, and is about three times more common in women than in men. Today, we delve into the latest advancements that promise relief and hope. Let's gain insights that could change the way we perceive and manage migraines from our esteemed guest, Dr. Anish Bhattacharji. Dr. Anish is a consultant neurologist currently practicing in Guwahati. And today, doctor will guide us through this enlightening discussion of migraine care, focusing not only on challenges and advancements, but also shedding light on the unspoken concerns that shape the lives of patients. Welcome, Dr. Anish. It's a pleasure to have you here with us today. Thank you, Dr. Harshita. It's nice joining you in this platform for discussing on migraine. Yes, thank you, doctor. Uh, now, doctor, migraine is a chronic condition and I'm sure there is there are a lot of complexities involved in diagnosing migraine. So, Dr. Uh, Anish, uh, what criteria should be considered to ensure that you do not have a false positive diagnosis of migraine? Yes, uh, correctly, uh, as you have mentioned, uh, di diagnosis of migraine is mostly a clinical criteria. We do not, at present, we do not have uh, definite lab tests or investigations to confirm the diagnosis. So it's mostly clinical diagnosis. And uh, uh, we, what we follow in our day to day practice is the ICHD3 criteria, International Classification for Headache Disorders. So you know, in daily practice, we face two kinds of patients. One is migraine without aura and those having migraine with aura. So according to the symptoms uh, for migraine without aura, the uh, diagnostic criteria is different. Like there has to be at least five attacks with the headaches lasting around four to 72 hours with some peculiar qualities like pulsatile, throbbing headache, unilateral headache and associated with nausea, vomiting, photophobia, phonophobia and also we have to rule out the other uh, differential diagnosis and when it comes to migraine with aura these uh, the attack uh, duration is almost similar but we have to uh, like uh, characterize the different types of aura aura is not only the visual aura which is commonly seen in migraine patients but also it can be related to uh, the brainstem region where there is verti vertigo, dysarthria, tinnitus and all. There can be sensory symptoms in the hands and limbs. There can be some speech arrest, aphasia or word finding difficulties. So, uh, in with uh, when patients with, coming with migraine with aura, we have to include the previous characteristics as well as we have to characterize the uh, oral symptoms, which is all very important in the diagnosis. Yes, doctor. And uh, now, um... Doctor, can you also discuss what challenges do you face when diagnosing acute and chronic migraine? Uh, the first and foremost uh, uh, problem which we face is the patients are not able to uh, properly uh, characterize the type of headache because in may, in some cases we don't we do not find the characteristic pulsatile or throbbing headache. Patient may describe some vague type of discomfort or so all, all over the scalp and uh, sometimes. Uh, headache is featureless so that's one very important uh, challenge which we face when patients with migraine comes to us also uh, because uh, patients are uh, already uh, some taking over-the-counter medications uh, and uh, analgesic medications so the evolution characteristic evolution of headache is not there they some of them are uh, like uh, too um, cautious they uh, immediately when the headache starts, when it is very mild or moderate in severity, then they try to take the medicine. Though the evolution of headache, even the duration of headache, how long the headache is persisting, nobody, very less people are able to tolerate a headache which is lasting for like more than 6 hours or more than 12 hours or so. Also, because of uh, the lack of awareness or lack of education or whatever it may be, the oral symptoms, especially patients who are having migraine with aura, the oral symptoms, or even in migraine, we have some premonitory symptoms. 
these are not well recognized by the patients they uh, often they are uh, i because of obviously because of lack, lack of education so uh, sometimes uh, when oral symptoms starts if we are able to give the abortive therapy for migraine then patient gets uh, gets relieved very early but identification of these symptoms knowledge about these symptoms and the symptoms vary from patient to patient so this part is important and this is obviously a very big challenge while we are treating or diagnosing the patients with migraine okay doctor and uh, now dr anish as migraine is associated with several medical and psychiatric co- comorbidities so uh, in your practice what are most common comorbidities observed with migraine correctly said dr harshita uh, i what i feel is that uh, the most common uh, uh, comorbid conditions in migraine patients is uh, sleep deprivation or insomnia which uh, and as we all know that uh, sleep deprivation is also uh, subsequently a trigger which worsens the migraine headache so this uh, sleep dip, uh, sl- inadequate sleep inadequate rest sleep deprivation insomnia is very common along with that patients have psychiatric uh, comorbidities also like anxiety depression which can be there from beforehand due to various causes or due to migraine itself when patient is not satisfied with the therapy or not getting relieved from his or her pain then subsequently patient uh, goes into depression along with that obesity is seen in uh, uh, many individuals and uh, weight loss and some uh, migraine prophylactic drugs which are helping uh, the patient to lose weight they also helps in uh, good control of migraine and patients with migraine are usually taking the over, over the counter pills anesthetics and analgesics for migraine they have these depression anxiety also accompanied with that there is gastritis patients uh, have dyspepsia gastritis bloating sometimes even nausea which may or may not be related to the migraine symptoms and we some in uh, rest the cardiovascular comorbidities may or may not be there they are not very common like hypothyroidism diabetes hypertension but most common uh, are the ones which i have described it is insomnia the psychiatric um, uh, problems like depression anxiety and obesity yes doctor it is very crucial to comprehend the broader impact of this condition on overall health and moving ahead doctor can you discuss the latest advancements in acute and chronic migraine management including non pharmacological approaches and emerging medications yes so so uh, in case of acute treatment of migraine that is for the abortive therapy uh, now till now we have been using the common nsaids and uh, triptans uh, we have uh, uh, some newer therapies which have come up one is this uh, i would like to talk about lesmedetan which is a uh, which acts on the serotonin serotonin 1f receptor so one advantage is that unlike the other triptans there is no vasoconstriction so there is a lesser amount of cardiovascular uh, cardiovascular side effects besides this um, as we have understood the pathophysiology of migraine better so the molecules which have been targeting the cgrp have come up so previously for acute uh, migraine we had only two that is the remegipant and the erbogipant but uh, in the, recently this year some intranasal formulation that is the zevegipant has also come up uh, so these uh, therapies are the ones which are uh, uh, new they are uh, targeting directly the cgrp neuro in uh, uh, non um, pharmacological uh, devices like some neuromodulation devices which can be operated Uh, by just using a smartphone and uh, by just uh, signaling when the migraine pain is st- starting some uh, devices uh, like non invasive vagal nerve stimulation these are also coming up and hopefully in future when patients are uh, tired of taking abortive medications they can use these devices to control their migraine and uh, yes uh, and uh, regarding this uh, uh, for the uh, chronic migraines uh, again the cgrp related therapies are there which can be given once in a month or maybe twice or thrice in a year the cgrp antagonists uh, recently one oral uh, medication has also been approved also some we have options like uh, uh, occipital nerve block using some local anesthetic agents botulinum toxin and uh, also these neuromodulation techniques which i have described before they are also being tried 
for uh, chronic migraine yes thank you dr anish for helping us understand the range of options available for patients dealing with this condition and now in your experience how has the introduction of cgrp monoclonal antibodies transformed the landscape of migraine prevention and what potential do they hold yes so as i have uh, described before many uh, therapies targeting the cgrp is uh, coming to the picture for treatment of migraine so because uh, we have understood the pathophysiology better the cgrp which helps in the pain transmission and vasodilation that is being directly targeted the uh, advantages uh, of the cgrp antibodies are like it they have good efficacy a lesser side effect profile compared to the other chronic therapies which we have been using so far and uh, for the chronic uh, migraineers there is convenient monthly dose or uh, even uh, quarterly dosing or maybe bi yearly dosing that is uh, that is also there and uh, no, there is uh, less interaction with other medicine but uh, yes uh, right now they they are relatively new so uh, we are yet to uh, understand how how much um, uh, potential they hold how much uh, he- benefit they will be for us especially in the indian patients uh, they uh, at present their cost is very high not everybody can afford they are uh, not and they have these have not been uh, tried in the elderly population or the pediatric population so there is no data regarding that and also it is not indicated in pregnancy and best feeding so uh, um, they do hold uh, promise uh, when we are able to see their uh, uh, efficacy low side effect profile but uh, yes so uh, as more and more uh, cgrp more anti cgrp molecules come into use we are will be yet to see how much they benefit our patients thank you doctor for sharing your valuable insights now uh, coming to our last question in your opinion what are the major roadblocks surrounding the management of migraine patients and how these can be addressed yes it's a very important question which you have asked so uh, one uh, major roadblock is uh, which i have mentioned before uh, while talking uh, to you is the or recognition of the oral symptoms these uh, symptoms are uh, patients are need to be educated about the oral aura and oral part of the migraine and uh, the oral symptoms are not only visual but they can be even auditory or even sensory or even uh, they can be abnormal taste sensation so just not the visual part but we have to recognize help to help them to understand that various other kinds of auras can be there and uh, if they are able to recognize the onset of the oral symptoms they can take the abortive med- medication and they can get quick relief from the uh, migraine secondly i would like to mention that uh, patient with, patient with migraine need to follow some lifestyle measures like regular sleep regular exercises Uh, regular exercise good uh, healthy food habits you have to avoid caffeine sweets chocolate and many and some foods which trigger migraine so uh, we need to uh, educate them and they have to strictly follow their lifestyle measures another uh, problem which i often face is the compliance to therapy because uh, it is a uh, not a very short duration therapy it's, it needs a long duration uh, follow uh, long dur- it's the therapies of long duration maybe at least minimum 6 months or a, or a year yeah, but once uh, suppose the patients uh, feel better after one month they tend to stop the therapy or to um, uh, like uh, they self assess themselves and reduce the dose of the prophyl- prophylactic drug and that causes recurrence of migraine and lastly i would like to also mention that uh, the comorbid conditions which i have discussed they also need to be addressed besides migraine and we have to make sure that Uh, whatever therapies we are ad- administering they have they do not have an additional side effect profile or they do not have any significant interaction with the migraine medications thank you dr anish for sharing your perspective and uh, now we have arrived towards the end of this session so thank you doctor uh, for joining us today and sharing your invaluable insights thank you very much and a huge thank you to our audience for tuning in and before we conclude i urge you to explore the medsynapse platform a vibrant hub for professional doctors where you can engage in meaningful discussions connect with expert doctors and contribute to the evolution of healthcare got any questions or thoughts engage with us in the comment section below we'll be more than happy to answer you i'm your host dr harshita signing off bye bye